Hi, my name is John and this is Business Focus. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to test for independence. So let's get started. And we're back. One of the more common ways for testing or for doing conducting hypothesis testing for categorical data is the use of contingency test or test for independence. If one is independent from the other factor here or other variable here. So let's take a look at an example here to illustrate how to conduct test of independence here. So here we have a sample data set comprised of two variables in terms of vehicles, types of vehicles that you purchase and the likelihood that you would purchase the vehicle, whether it's a yes or no here. So first, we need to create a cost tabulation here to better illustrate the summary here. So let's display it the same page. So vehicle on one side, likelihood of purchase is on the other. Okay, let's align it properly. Okay. So in the contingency table here, or in the cost tabulation, you can see here, that majority of vehicles that was preferred in terms of types of vehicle is the Ford Fusion with total of 200 and the least favorite is Chevrolet Impala now in terms of purchasing an actual vehicle you have majority more than 50% of the 500 sample size that we've collected uh, tend to buy the vehicles question here is is the decision to buy or not to buy a vehicle independent from the type of car here so let's find out so here we already have a we call an observed frequency or actual frequencies here so we need to create another table or expected frequency so here we have an observed frequency okay so we need to create another one so Identify the expected frequency. So we need to create the same table, but filling up, filling in, not filling up, the cross values here. Okay, so you have no, oops, and yes. Okay, so to do that, we just need to multiply and divide the column total. And the, uh, and the row total divided by the total sample size here. So what do I mean by that? So for Chevrolet Impala here, so you need to get the column total for Chevrolet Impala for the no reply. So that's 188. Uh, multiply the column total of Chevrolet Impala, which is 125. Okay? And then divided by the sam total sample size, which is 500. So you get 47 so we we'll, we need to do this for the other uh, categories here so for 14 fusion the column total for no is still 188 multiply so for the grand total for 14 fusion it's now 200 right and then divide the total sample size which is still 500 here so you get 75.2 so let's put some decimal places two decimal places would be fine and let's do the same for Honda Accord so the column total is 188 times 175 divided by 500 okay so we do the same for the yes uh, replies so the column total now would change so from 188 to 312 Multiply to 125 divided by 500. And we do the same for the rest. 312 times 200 divided by 500. And lastly, for Honda Accord, the yes column total is 312 times the row total for Honda Accord, which is 175 divided by 500. So you get different values there. So once you've done that, you can now solve for the p-value, not p-value. 
So, so again, for step one, our step one is to determine the null and alternative hypothesis. So in this case, our null hypothesis here is uh, the likelihood likely purchase is independent of the type of vehicle that one purchases. And then for the alternative, wait, what happened there? So for the alternative, the likelihood of a purchase is not independent of the type of vehicle that you choose. Meaning there's bias. So let's find out. So for step two here, we need to determine the level of significance here. So since it's not given, let's assume it's 0 0.05. So let's insert equation level. It's 0 0.05. And then for the test statistic here, so, in the Excel function here, we can skip the step 3 part since uh, it will solve automatically the p-value here for the chi-square test here or test of independence. So, for the p-value, let's type it here. So, for test of independence, you use the function formula chi-test or chi-test. So, chi-test. And if you see... It's asking you for two particular arrays here or range. You have the actual ob observed frequencies and then you have the expected range or expected frequencies here. So we need to select first the actual range, the values within the cross tabulation, and then comma. Then for the expected, and then you close parentheses and select enter. So our p-value here is point. 019. So let's skip the step 3, go to step 4. So our p value here is 0 0.019. Is it less than or equal to 0 0.05? So based on that statement or conclusion, we can say that we have to reject the null hypothesis here. So what's the implication here if you reject the null hypothesis? Meaning the likelihood of a purchase is not independent on the type of vehicles that one chooses. So more than likely, a person would uh, purchase a vehicle, uh, would, would likely purchase a vehicle depending on the type of uh, vehicle that they prefer. Whether it's a small vehicle, maybe an SUV or even a truck and so forth. So that's how you can utilize test of independence here, particularly for categorical data here. So you know, it can be helpful in conducting hypothesis testing here. Anyway, that concludes our video for today. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Also, you can leave your comments down below to suggest future topics on future videos. For more guides, tutorials, and tips, you can check out my other videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.